Requiem for a Dream, both the book by Hubert Selby Jr. and a film directed by Darren Aronofsky, no less. Um, they are both disturbing to an equal measure, in my not so humble opinion. Um, they it explores the dark descent uh, of four characters into addiction and despair. And I would like to give you some key differences because I believe this is one of those um, cases when a disturbing book uh, got a decent uh, deep adaptation. Welcome. This is Check That Book, a place where we get acquainted with the most disturbing books ever written and this is one of those fun episodes where we discuss book versus movie uh, link to the playlist will be in the description long story short i love disturbing literature and disturbing cinema today's study case is infamous requiem for a dream which many find to be a masterpiece of its own kind which i kind of agree with. This is a movie that I would freely show in public schools, for example. I mean, this has such a strong message. The book and the movie both get their message across perfectly without going too much into detail and uh, being overly grotesque and uh, sh showing too much. It, they're descriptive all right. I mean, the book is and the film also doesn't shy away from uh, uh, some disturbing moments here and there, but it's not so much the imagery, it's more of a context uh, that we need to focus on here. The context itself is frightening enough. And this is not pure horror, this is the sad reality that many people find themselves in. The novel is written in a rather experimental form, in my opinion. It has long paragraphs that uh, sometimes lack punctuation for some reason. It's, it's, it's creating an experience that is rather immersive, actually. Albeit, I, as a writer myself, I, I get a bit confused uh, when confronted with such styles because it's my pet peeve. <laughs> it's, but, but it didn't really bother me. I mean, if we put that aside, uh, it was an intense experience on its own, and it was perfectly crafted to reflect the minds of our characters. Uh, the movie, well, it compensates for this in style and visual techniques in Aronofsky's style. If you know, you know. Uh, this director is infamous for his signature style. Uh, that includes a lot of cuts and uh, split screens. He works very well with the split screens. Uh, intense close-ups that can be a bit disgusting sometimes, but then I guess that's kind of the point. Uh, it captures also the feelings uh, of our pro uh, protagonists and uh, uh, the emotional aspects of the plot, the movie, what, what the hell's going on there, right? So yeah, it's captured in a different way uh, so far everything that we covered book versus movie this is the first one that is very well done in a completely unique style that i personally found very attractive and if you ask me whether i would reread the book or watch the movie yeah i would watch the movie the movie is well done and its point was to Im immerse you into the uh, case study of four addicts dif different addicts uh, with different backstories and different outcomes. Whilst the novel, again, it provides some deeper insights uh, regarding the backgrounds of our uh, main characters and uh, the stories of their past, etc. The film focuses more on the outcome, right? It focuses on um, the effects of addiction, which I believe is... Uh, it works a bit better as sort of an anti-drug propaganda, if you ask me. The book is good, it's disturbing, and it's disturbing because it depicts reality very well, I believe. And yes, I, as much as I would recommend the book, uh, maybe for a bit more mature uh, reader, but when it comes to the film, yeah, show it to the kids, 
I, I mean, seriously. Yes, yes, we might argue that some films need to have age restrictions, specifically horror and specifically the disturbing niche of uh, the genre. But uh, with this film, I, uh, I beg to differ, I believe. It doesn't show you explicit uh, details of anything. Yeah, a bit some dr drug use, but mostly the outcome. Like I said before, there's four main characters that we focus on, and one of them is Sarah, Sarah Goldfarb. She, her story is uh, slightly different from the others because her uh, drug abuse and addiction uh, is dieting, diet pills, right? Uh, in the book, Sarah's story is gradual, and uh, the reader sees her slipping into madness in obviously a more detailed and intimate way, like the book is capable of portraying. But uh, in the film, uh, Sarah's transformation is heavily stylized. Oh, yes. Uh, Aronofsky uses disturbing visuals, such as the hallucination of her refrigerator attacking her, for example. Um, he amplifies her descent into madness with a more horrifying immediacy, which is not a bad take, if you ask me. Everybody else's stories were pretty spot on, very following the book very well, very closely. And again, I've been saying this a ton of times before, I'll say it again. Sure, the book usually provides more details, but in this case, I, I could argue it's not really necessary. The backgrounds of people can be different and are different. And it doesn't matter whether you are a rich, spoiled brat born with a silver spoon uh, or you're a struggling middle class worker or you're a dirt poor bum. It doesn't matter when an addiction hits you, it hits you pretty much equally. And the outcome is going to be negative regardless of your background. There is not much to say about this movie. The, the key differences were the uh, style of it, because Aronofsky always uh, turns to a more um, specific, stylized look, which isn't bad at all. I think with this case study, it works perfectly fine. And uh, But we need to talk about the ending, uh, definitely, because the novel's ending, it's bleak, and uh, sadly so, with uh, an emphasis on the psychological and physical ruins of each character's life. Selby offers a more internal view, allowing readers to feel the hopelessness, but uh, also understand the complex emotional backgrounds, again, coming back to the backgrounds of our main characters. In the film, the ending is much darker and much more visceral. Aronofsky visualizes the consequences of the story about our four unfortunate souls um, with stark and harrowing images and uh, rapid cuts uh, between the characters, so to speak. It it's very well done. Again, it's his style that, in my opinion, works perfectly well with said topic. Uh, the tone is brutal and offers less room for reflection. It's just bam, in your face, and you just, you just left, you're just left there sitting in complete despair. Uh, it emphasizes the horror over empathy in, in this case, in my opinion. In the book, yes, you, you get a deeper overview and uh, you feel uh, all, also disturbed and desperate, but with the movie, it's a slap in the face. And I think it works even better. The same could be said, by the way, about the way he portrays addiction. In the book, it's a slow and creeping, illness-like descent into madness, starting off gradually, and uh, yeah, eventually everything goes to shits. But uh, yeah, with Aronofsky again following his, uh, staying true to his style, it's clip cuts, like a sort of a montage of uh, cuts and the technique that he uses Again, uh, the close-ups and drugs being prepared and used and shit like that. Uh, the so-called hip-hop montage technique uh, uses the rapid cuts and uh, close-ups of drugs being prepared, etc. Uh, this, this visceral language accelerates the uh, perception of addiction and making it appear as an all-consuming force that uh, we have to struggle against here.
the film shows you the immediate emotional impact and I think it is perfect. Uh, both the uh, book and the film capture the story's essence, but, you know, with slightly differing focuses, like I said. Uh, whilst the book focuses more on the psychological aspects, the film focuses on the outright horrors of drugs. So, with this being said, a uh, quick disclaimer, don't do drugs, kids. Unless you're cool like me. Don't do drugs, kids. And not just kids. Yeah, obviously, this goes without saying, but stay clear. And if you need help, seek it. Once upon a time. You guys, I once again remind you that on the 1st of November, my first ever hardback book, Misanthropically Inclined, is going to be available on Amazon. So excited, so grateful. Um, the ebook most likely will be available on the same date, but I will keep you posted. And make sure to subscribe for more information. And uh, yeah, that's all I wanted to say about this. Now let's wrap this up. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like disturbing content, consider giving this video a boost in a form of an erect thumb and make sure to subscribe for more. Take care, ladies and gentlemen, and I shall see you soon. Goodbye.